How are you? I'm doing all right. How are you doing? We're good. What part of the world are you residing in right now? Uh, I am in the middle of nowhere, Maine. Uh, Maine is gorgeous this time of year. It is. It is. It's a real gloomy Stephen King kind of day today, though. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, though? The gloomy days are the best, though, because especially in the summer, if you need one of those days where you don't want to do anything and it's gloomy outside, you can sit around all day and not feel guilty about it at all. At all. It feels great. <laughs> no, it's uh, really so great. I've, been doing, I've been doing press all day today, so it's, it, because it's not nice outside, I don't feel like I'm missing anything. So <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Although I feel like my parents live in Scottsdale, Arizona, and I worked in Phoenix for a while, and when I lived out there... It was sunny every day, but it was like blazing hot. So you look outside and you go, it is gorgeous. I got to do something. Then you walk outside and you're like, oh, hell no. No, nope, <laughs> no, nope, back inside. I, when I first got there, I couldn't, my parents first got there, like my stepdad would wake me up. He's like, oh, we got to go hike and golf. I'm like, dude, it's like six in the morning. And then when I realized it's already 87 degrees at seven, I'm like, now I understand why everybody gets up earlier than the rest the of the sun. world. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so you have so much going on right now. Let's start with the good stuff, uh, Death by Rock and Roll. And I've heard two songs off the entire record. And my Lindsay, who works before I do for us, has, hold the, her, has heard the whole record and texted me yesterday. And she's like, this record is amazing. There's not a bad song on the entire thing. So congratulations on that. But uh, tell me about it. Uh, well, the, the song is... Death by, that's such a blanket. Tell me about it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the song Death by Rock and Roll is obviously it's out now. It's the first single off the, the new record. It's the title track. Um, it's It really is just the, I keep using the cliche, but it really is just the tip of the iceberg for this record. It's, you know, it's the first song. It, it, I keep saying it's kind of like the opening credits to a movie, like just the beginning. So, so uh, it's kind of a, if you like the stay tuned type situation sure. uh, but uh it's i mean the song really it was it's kind of our as it it was crazy as it might sound it's kind of our battle cry for life um it's our battle cry for rock and roll of of freedom of live life your own way go out your own way don't let sure. it be different you know and that's that's kind of the that that song was kind of the start of of the new album it's it's fun. You know what I like, what I love about it is lyrically, you don't have to dive too much into it. You can just listen to it and have a good time. And I think the world could use more of that right now as much as possible. I mean, you don't want to be oblivious to everything that's going on in the world. But at the same time, like I was watching the news over the weekend. And after like, I realized that 90 minutes had gone by, I'm like, I need a break. Like you just have to forget about life for three minutes and 57 seconds. Yeah, no, it's it's certainly overwhelming times. I think a lot of people are feeling a lot of anxiety and and that's you know, that's what music's good for. Music to me it's like it's it's the best escape. It's the it's it's the best drug, you know. Yeah. It's the it's the thing that can it can take you to a another land, another place, another you know, headspace. Um it's I always say music's been my best friend. It's like the one thing I can always turn to and it's always there for me and it always gives gives me what I need. <laughs> I love the way you can listen to a song that you may have listened to, five, let's say five or six years ago. I say this because I found an old MP3 player that I probably hadn't seen since 2014. So I went <laughs> back and started listening to this stuff. And I was just telling before you jumped in, like some of the songs, I'm like, I forgot how great that song was. And other songs, I was like, what the hell possessed me to put this on a playlist? At the time? <laughs> but I think it's cool that you can take a song from like five or six years ago. And at that time, regardless of whether the artist had that in mind, those lyrics in that song meant something to you. And now if you yeah. listen to it again, the same song can mean something completely different to you based on what's going on in your life. And I think music has, it's the one thing that I think music can do that nothing else in the world has the power to do. I wholeheartedly agree. It's the, that's, I think that's what's so cool. I mean, there's so many things that's so cool about music, but that's one of the things that it's like, even for me as someone who, who writes the songs, you know, when I, when I write them and record them, they mean something to me. It's, you know, very specific or whatever it is. When I listen to like our first album now, ten years later, it's they they take on a whole new meaning, and it's 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 cool that that music can evolve with the person, you know, with the listener, and uh, and can you know continue to feed you something that you maybe didn't know you even needed. Do you think it's crazy that ten years have gone by since you decided to focus on music and do an album? It yeah, I mean, in one way, it feels like 
it feels like yesterday. And then in another way, it feels like it was a ten, only 10 years. It's been a billion years. <laughs> but, so it's, I think it depends on the moment uh, of how I think about it. But it's, yeah, it's, it's certainly wild. It's been a, it's been a wild ride. <laughs> Do you still get people who remember you from the Gossip Girl days and stuff like that? Okay. I do. Less, I mean, way less than in the beginning. Uh, sure. It's, it, now, so if, if people mention it, it's more of like an afterthought of almost a joke of like, haha, remember when you were on blah, 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 you know? Right. Uh, because it was so long ago. I mean, I was, I was legitimately a child, so... Did you have a lot of people that were, when you made that decision, because you had... I mean, obviously the modeling thing going and, you know, the acting thing going, you had a lot going in a positive direction at the time when you decided to go, hey, I'm going to focus on music. Did you have a lot of people that like tried to sit you down and go, whoa, put the brakes on a second. This might not be the best idea. Yeah, um, it was certainly a, a struggle and a fight to get, I mean, first of all, just contracts and stuff alone. I mean, just sure. to be able to get out of, of that uh, was, was a fight. But uh no, I was really fortunate. I mean, I have a very tight knit group of people around me who have always been really supportive of my vision and, and what I want to do with my life. And that's, that's really important is to surround yourself with people who, who just want to encourage what you want to do um, and not try to impart uh, their idea of their career path or whatever onto you. It's more just how do I help embellish what you're already doing? Um, I totally just, I had, I had something. <laughs> I totally just lost it. Um, where we uh, d d d people but, pressure uh, you not to, so yeah i mean to get out of the show that itself was it was a, a a battle and i was just really lucky that, that the writers understood i i really just had an honest conversation and i went listen i don't want to do this anymore like i'm a kid and i don't i don't enjoy this like this isn't i got put into this as a young girl you know it's i've done it my whole life but this isn't my passion this isn't where my heart lies please let me go and they they didn't exactly let me go, but they wrote me out. So I was able to tour and promote the album and solely focus on music. And I'm really, really grateful for that because I don't, I don't know where I'd still be making music, but I don't know where I would have ended up had I had to stay on that show for, you know, many more years. <laughs> <laughs> would you consider, <laughs> would you ever want to go back to acting or do you want to stay away from that as much as? Yeah, no, I'm good. <laughs> no, I just want I I just heard, I mean, I know, I know being in the, on the radio side of things, I understand the pressures of the music industry a little more and talking to bands and seeing how they live their life. I get it. But from what, from what I hear from people that I know that are either work with actors or are close with actors, that schedule is brutal when, especially if you're on television and you're on an ongoing series, like, I mean, your time is just oh, yeah. so limited. The schedule was insane. I mean, I, the one thing I do really remember was when I, I was making the first album, when I was, we were making Light Me Up, my schedule was, I, it, I didn't sleep at all. Like maybe an hour a night if I was lucky because I would work from like four or five in the morning till whatever time at night and then go straight to the studio and be there all night long to catch maybe like an hour or two of sleep and then go back to my, what I call my day job. And so... I lived off of Red Bull. <laughs> I, lived, I lived off of energy drinks, um, making the first record. So yeah, that schedule is brutal. But uh, no, acting for me, it's just, it's not, I, I'm saying I never was an actor. I'm not an actor. I never was an actor. I just happened to be on a television show as a kid. You know, it's not something I ever wanted to do. Um, and I know I, I said in some recent interview and it got picked up and kind of turned into a thing that I wouldn't, never say never to acting what I meant by that was was that I, when I was younger I was very pig-headed about the way I would say no acting and like the way it would come across I was very just young about it and now that I'm, I'm, I'm older I look at it more as like a, a, this is a part of my past it's something I did it's not something I looking to do in the future but if someone called me up and said hey you want to come play a version of yourself on this in a scene like Chris Cornell in singles right? You know, like that's something I'd maybe be like oh that's kind of cool like sure but it's not something that I'm pursuing in any way at all so I just want to clarify that sure that <laughs> you know what I think though I think you're in good company though because the only other actor that I can think of off the top of my head that made a successful transition from acting to being able to focus on music and doing both really well uh Jared Leto from 30 Seconds to Mars has managed sure. to be able to do 
both. Most of the time, like if you see someone that's in one genre, whether it's acting or sports, and they go, well, I'm going to make a record, people are like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not good, but, you know, I think music, you have the fortunate power that music speaks for itself. And if the music's good, you know, that cuts through a lot of that. Well, you shouldn't be doing that. You're an actress. Well, kind that's, of thing. well that's the goal. See, I always look, I look at it like, no, no, no. I'm a musician who, who acted at one point for a little bit. It's the other way around. It's just, you know, yeah. um, Jared Leto, he's actually a really talented actor. I, I'm sure. not a, I don't consider myself a talented actor. I just did, I, I read lines that were put in front of me as a kid, like, I don't really it's not the same thing like if you want to be an actor that's a lot of it's a you know that's a the commitment to to being that that's that, and I certainly am not doing that at all I'm fully committed fully committed to music and, and writing the best song I can which takes a lot of time <laughs> sure um so it's been kind of weird to I can imagine for you putting out a record in this time when everybody's been on quarantine because you know normally the cycle goes you have a new song it goes out you put out a record you go on tour and you know off and running has it what have you been doing since you've been on the quarantine and kind of live in this phase of life while promoting some really strong new music um not a, i mean not a ton i just uh a lot of promotion, a lot of Instagram lives and things like this that I'm doing now. I'm trying to figure out the the working from home thing like everyone else and uh, and really just playing a lot of guitar, just playing a lot of guitar, watching movies, Netflix, uh, trying to work out from home, which <laughs> which in the beginning I was doing really good at. And now my my motivation is dwindling, um, hanging with my dog going outside when I can, you know, just kind of waiting for the storm to pass and, and waiting until we can get back out on the road and finally play this stuff live, which I am dying to do. Yeah. I think a lot of people are dying for artists to be able to do that again. Uh, what have you been, what kind of dog do you have? Um, I have a little Maltese and she okay. looks like, her name's Petal and she looks like a puppy. She's like two pounds because she was the runt and she just never got big. But she's like 14 years old now. And so she's getting up there. And even though she looks like a puppy, she's she's this bitchy old lady. <laughs> <laughs> but she, she still looks like a little infant. So I don't know. She's adorable. But we, we, have, we have three pugs. And I constantly question if, you know, for a while, I mean, if you guys haven't made, you don't have to be by yourselves anymore. We're here all day. I wondered, have, since it's been so long, if they're like, will you people just leave? <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> I know. Let me do all the mischief. I think she's yeah. pretty. I think she's the one that she lucked out. She's because I can't bring her on tour anymore, just because she's she's too old now. She's not as uh, not as quick on her toes as she once was. But um, she's the one who lucked out having me home all the time. Mommy doesn't have to go anywhere. Although I think she does miss her her trolling around the house looking for her mischief when I'm not there. I I, I always made the joke that I, I want to get one of those cameras and set it up like a motion detector camera. Yeah. Put it house and see what she does when I'm gone because I, I she's this big and she can get into she's Everything. opening cabinets like six feet up in the air I don't know, I don't know how she does it, <laughs> we have one that's 18 he just turned 18 in uh, uh, April and he does not sleep at night he for whatever reason that's when he goes on his mall walks throughout the entire house and you can just hear him like like clicking around and then every now and then he'll want something so it's like this old man this like bark that's not really like a hardcore bark but it's loud enough that you acknowledge that he's around so and then you're like bailey you cannot have breakfast at 3 30 in the morning go back to bed too you know? early. Uh, dogs are the best they are they're awesome they're like little people yeah. so when you can go on the road uh, i always ask this of artists because i think it's a fun question to see what they say, if you could put yourself on any tour with an artist, living, dead, nothing is off limits. We're talking strictly fantasy here. Who would you want your? Who would you want to be part of a lineup with? The Beatles. Really? <laughs> Does that count? Yeah. That, that's so totally much, that's exactly. living or dead. I mean, yeah. I, I they're my favorite band of all time. If I got to, I always love. I mean, tour in general is a lot of fun. Playing with different bands is lots of fun. But when you're on a bill or on a tour with someone that you really love, it's it's a gift because you get to play your show, which is the best thing in the world. And then you get to watch their show every night. And that's just awesome. Um, so if I could watch the Beatles every night, hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
nothing wrong with that. I just like to hear what other people say because you never know. And sometimes you get like sometimes you get the answer that you'd absolutely expect. And then other times, like people throw something out of left field that you that's like a completely different genre of music than what's Sorry. there. And you're like, whoa, okay. But no, you can't go wrong. Did you watch? Did you ever watch yesterday the mu the movie about the I guy? Did. Wasn't that a great I movie? I thought it was super cute. I thought it took me a minute though in the beginning when he's trying to remember the songs, I didn't realize that he was trying, I didn't put two and two together and he was saying the words wrong. He's singing the words wrong. And I went, that's weird. Is that like a licensing thing that they can't use the, all the lyrics correctly? Like why that's, that's wrong. Yeah. I didn't realize that's obviously a part of the script, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> it took me a minute, but I, I thought it was super cute. I thought it was fun. And I think it made me appreciate all those songs so much more because oh, yeah. you just you know when you hear it in different and then you start thinking about what would have happened to music if the beatles didn't really exist for so long just given the fact that they've influenced so many different so many genres and bands i mean they did everything like i don't even i don't understand it it's I, it baffles my my brain my my tiny little brain can't comprehend how they made that much music that covered so much in such a short amount of time that it's and everything is of such high quality that it, I don't, I, I don't know. I don't know how they did it. That was a magical, magical meeting of, of people. I, there's, there'll never be anyone like them. It's just, it was, you know, once in a lifetime. No, it's, you just, you, you catch lightning in a bottle and you can spend your entire life trying to do it again. And it probably will not, you might come close once or twice, but it's just, there's nothing that's probably ever going to be on that level ever yeah, again, no matter how, no matter how much you work. I mean, that's the scary part about writing in general, I think is, you know, when you, when you create something great or that you think is really great, the first thought is, this is amazing. I'm so, I'm so happy with this. And then the second thought is, Oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Like I can't, what if I have to do this again? How I have no idea how this even came to be. Like, so no. that's, that's, the, that's the thing that makes writing such a kind of torturous process is you never know where it's going to come from. No, and I feel bad for artists like Green Day when they wrote American Idiot. Green Day will most likely never write another American Idiot as long as they or have a career. And it's not that anything they're doing now is bad. It's just everything about that album came out at a certain time where everything clicked. And it's just one of those things that, you know, if you can't, you just can't duplicate it. It's, well, it's stuff you can't plan. It's where just the stars align and something kismet happens in the universe and there's your... There's your moment, you know. Awesome. So speaking of music, when does your album finally become available to download every track and everybody can take a listen to it and see what's see what it's all about? Uh, we don't have an exact release date for the full album yet, just because everything's still kind of up in the air because everything's so crazy right now. Um, but hopefully soon. Um, I, what I can tell you, though, is that there are going to be more singles and stuff coming out. So Death Rock is just, it's just the first single. It's just the just the little tip of the iceberg. Um, so stay tuned. It's we're not we're not going away again. We're we're back and it feels good. Did you did you have any particular influences this go around that you maybe didn't use the last time or that you have wanted to try and finally got the chance to experiment with? Um. I wouldn't say anything that direct uh, of like a direct influence like that. I mean, we did get to this record came from, uh, you never know where anything comes from, but this record, came, <laughs> this came from kind of a, a very, I was in kind of a very dark place um, with a lot of, a lot of loss that we suffered over the past few years. And so this record is kind of the child that was birthed from all of that. Um, it was kind of the writing of this was the kind of the catharsis that, that got me through that really, very very hard period in my life um so it's all it's all in it's all in there um so it's not really a direct influence of one band or another but if you want direct i mean it, it does have one of the songs on it is called only love can save me now and that has uh matt cameron and kim sale of Soundgarden on it nice uh, which is was an amazing experience and i'm really excited for people to hear that song i'll <laughs> and, tell you what uh, I, before you, I'm sorry, I, when you said Soundgarden, uh, Chris Cornell is one of those voices that I miss. Like, talk about one of the most distinct voices. As soon I mean, as he sings a note, you recognize. Yeah, I mean, he, we were on, that was a, a big part. I mean, his, he, I mean, I can't even begin to explain the amount of influence he's had on, on me as a, as a person and as a musician. But I mean, we were on that last Soundgarden tour. Um, we were opening for them and, that was kind of this when when he 
past, that was kind of the start of my downward spiral, um, culminating into our, our producer, Cato, who then passed on a motorcycle accident. So it's kind of like one after the yeah. other for a minute and it hit me real hard. So all, all of that is put into this album and, and to say that, you know, Chris Cornell is not an extraordinarily huge influence on me would just be a flat out lie. So, I mean, yeah, one, I mean, just, I don't know. I'm on a t tangent now, but it's so good. It's ridiculous. He's so good. Yeah, I saw, I saw one of his acoustic shows and I could have listened to it all night. Like I, it could have went on for 10 hours and I would have been fine. Him and Prince, him and Chester Benningfield, when they passed, those were the ones that stopped me in my tracks that mm -hmm. I was like, oh, damn. Like that no. I, you know. The devastating you know, you know what it, you know what it feels like that the, yeah. the, the the heart drop in your, the pit of your stomach, guttural punch. You know, um, no, I mean just to go back to another band that you know I'd want to be on a bill with. Soundgarden, you know, was my top bill of all time, my favorite band of all time, Beatles Soundgarden. So we, <laughs> we 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 did that, and that was I mean getting to watch them every night was just just absolutely insane. Very cool. And, and, I know now you... and now they're on the and now they're on the album. Now now we've become friends, and then they're on the record. And and we've also got Tom Morello, who's he's guesting on a song called "And So It Went," which is cool. pretty cool. So yeah, it's a lot of I don't know a lot of a lot of interesting stuff. <laughs> Gotta just stay tuned. <laughs> like I said, uh, our midday girl Lindsay texts me. I think it was yesterday, and she's like, "I've heard this whole album, and it is fantastic." And I'm like, "How the hell did you hear it before I did?" But I okay. Heard... I'm wondering that too. How did she get that? Because <laughs> she knows, like, she knows people who, I was in Vegas, like, right before all this stuff started. And she would text me. She's like, oh, a friend of mine's a friend of so-and-so's, and they were on tour with them, and they managed so-and-so. And, -so, and they, she just knows, like, everybody, okay. and I don't know how. So she knows, six degrees of separation, she knows someone who knows someone who knows someone. But, like, she'll send me these random things. And, like, that was one of them. She's like, this album is so good. I'm not even lying. And I'm like, oh, okay. Well, that's cool. I can't wait to hear the whole thing. So, uh, well, cool. you know. Well, and you Howard know. Frank, I know you're watching this. So, can a brother get the hookup? <laughs> I mean, seriously. So. Well, I mean, I don't trust the online things. But, hey, if it gets leaked, it gets leaked. I don't know. It's, you know, the music's done. So, it's going to come out eventually. However it comes out. You know, I like to present it to the world and my own due time with the, all the artwork and you know all in a nice little ribbon but hey if the songs just are out then they're out you know what are you gonna do hey <laughs> if it's you know looking forward to hearing the whole thing best of luck you can't wait to see you guys on the road uh when eventually that all can become a possibility and everything and completely appreciate you giving up time of your day uh to talk to us in indianapolis and let us in on what's going on with pretty reckless no of course thank you man it's uh it's been a pleasure it's been fun. Looking forward to next time. Have a great one. Thank you so much for everything. And uh, stay safe and have a fantastic summer as much as one can under the current restrictions. Exactly. You too, man. All See right. you later. We'll Thank you. Later. Sounds good. Bye.